Okay, so let's have a go at proving that an ob a body suspended between two springs that we've used so many times in our examples does obey the conditions for simple harmonic motion. So, well, here it is. It's in an equilibrium position um, with two identical springs, one each side, and both springs are extended. So what we're saying here is that the, the left-hand side spring has, is being extended extended in the positive direction, um, so let's say by an, by an extension plus x, but the right hand spring is extended in a negative direction, so we'd have to call that an extension of minus x. And then we can, well let's label the two, let's label this spring 1 and this spring 2. They both have spring constant k, uh, but therefore we can write down the forces acting on the body due to spring 1, let's call that F1, and due to spring 2, which we call F2. Well, the force due to spring 1, we just have to apply Hooke's law. And remember, F equals minus Kx. So minus K times plus X. Well, that's obviously minus Kx. And the minus means, of course, that the force is acting in the negative direction towards the left. The force on the body due to the right-hand spring, F2, is minus K times X, but of course this time uh, our displacement is minus X, and so that gives us uh, plus KX. So there we go, and we can see that the resultant force, obviously, is the sum of those. Let's write it like that. So the resultant force is going to be F1 plus F2 which is obviously going to be minus kx plus kx, which is zero, as we'd expect, because it's in equilibrium, it's not moving. So, okay, well, that's all well and good, but what we need to do is see what happens when it's displaced, because we know the conditions for, for simple harmonic motion tell us what happens when, it's, when something is, when it's displaced, displaced from its equilibrium. So even though in the first example, above, at the top example, both springs are displaced from their equilibrium. The body that we're talking about is in its equilibrium. So there's a kind of distinction there. So now it's been displaced. Well, let's put a new kind of e, uh, a new positional line of where our body is at this moment in time. Uh, if I can try and do that through the centre of the body. And so I can put my new spring extensions on. Well, my left spring is now extended like by loads. So um, well, let's call that, um, it's now plus x plus some little, or not so little, x dash. And my right hand spring is also changed its extension. Let's do it down here so that we can kind of see it clearly. Well, it's going to be also, its extension is increased by that plus x dash. So it's going to be its new extension is minus x plus x dash. So minus x plus x dash, yes? Because it's less negative than it was before by x dash. The same amount that the other spring is more positively extended. Right, so hope that makes sense. This is still spring one. This is still spring two. They both still have spring constant k, of course. So we can now write down equations again um, to try and figure out um, what the new force is, the force due to spring 1 is, and the force due to spring 2. So we apply Hooke's law again, f equals minus kx, so it's minus k times the displacement, but the displacement this time is plus x plus x dash. And for the force due to spring 2 is minus kx, where x is the displacement, but the displacement this time is minus x minus x plus x dash. And so I can kind of simplify these and I can write them, get rid of the brackets. So I get minus kx minus kx dash. And if I expand the brackets in the bottom example, I get plus kx minus kx dash. I hope you can follow that through. So this time we uh, we still need to find our resultant force because this is going to show us if the displacement is proportional to the resultant force and towards the equilibrium. So let's have a go. Well, it's going to be F1 plus F2 
and we can sort of see what's going to happen, but minus, if we add them both up, minus kx minus kx dash plus kx minus kx dash. Well, we can see that those two kind of cancel each other out. And what we're left with is minus 2kx dash. So at first sight, that looks a bit strange, but let's write it um, underneath uh, clearly. So we're saying that the resultant force on our body is equal to minus 2k times x dash. Well, this does satisfy the conditions for simple harmonic motion. Why? Well, all that has to be true is that the force has to be proportional to the displacement for our body. Remember, F has to equal minus some constant times the displacement from equilibrium. Well, X dash is our displacement from equilibrium. So our displacement from equilibrium is X dash. And the constant, well, as long as it's constant, it is. It's two times the spring constant, but it is a constant. And it's the constant uh, of our um, simple harmonic motion in this case.